Okay, here I wanted to give you a look at the inside of a TXV. Now this is a non-adjustable TXV. Okay, to give you an idea of what these things look like when they're uh, you know inside all assembled, I kind of cut this one up a little bit and I'm pointing going to point a few things out. Here we have the liquid line inlet where liquid refrigerant goes right here to where this valve, this needle valve is. This line right over here is an equalizing line and you can't see it well. Let me see if I can find it. There, this little hole here is where the equalizing uh, line goes. There's a, a wall right here so this is separate from here. And there's a little hole that goes here up into where the diaphragm is and the diaphragm communicates down here with the low side uh, through where the the uh, shafts that move this this uh, needle in and out are. Down here is the low side. The refrigerant is coming through here, going down through this needle valve around the um, spring here and into this uh, line to the evap. Okay, um, let's look a little closer at the diaphragm. Okay, looking a little closer here, you can see the diaphragm here and here. And of course, up here is where the uh, cap tube fits onto that goes to the sensing bolt. So this, it doesn't look like it moves very much. It probably moves a little more than it shows because it's uh, when this was sanded off, it wasn't uh, didn't get real complete. But it doesn't move a lot. It only has to move a little bit. Okay, here you can see I went ahead and just kind of glued this little shaft in there so you could see where it would normally be. And it isn't quite up high enough because everything's, you know, there's no pressure or anything here, but uh, it would fit right under this metal piece here uh, that is connected to the diaphragm and it'll come down there and it would push down. And of course there's two of them, one in the back, one in the front, so they push evenly. So that's how that shaft works, that's how it actuates the valve. So those are attempting to open the valve with the pressure up here above the diaphragm. And of course the spring and the pressure around the spring, which is a low side pressure, are trying to close the valve. They're trying to push up. Okay, if the, let's say there was no spring at all here, and this R22 valve, and uh, it had R22 in the bulb, so the R22 pressure would be here. Uh, that's showing the temperature of the suction line and the corresponding pressure. Okay, if this spring wasn't here, the pressure down here and the pressure here, if they were the same, then the valve would not open. However, if there was any superheat, then the pressure here would be higher because that bulb is on the suction line. So the pressure would be higher here than here, so it would push open the valve. Now, we bias this valve with the spring. So suction pressure here, suction pressure plus superheat here, and then the spring bias. So if I adjust the spring to more tension, in other words, push it up like this so it's pushing harder against the uh, needle, then it's going to take more pressure here or a higher superheat to open the valve. It's a very simple valve. There's really not much to it. I say this is a non-adjustable valve and effectively it is. However, if you take this apart, there's a there's a hex in here that you could adjust this up and down, but you'd actually have to remove the suction line down here or the uh, pipe to the evaporator down here in order to adjust it. So effectively it's a non-adjustable valve. So uh, I hope this makes sense. 
I'm going to summarize right quick. Liquid comes in here and goes through around this valve. Uh, this equalizing line goes over to the suction line where we're sensing the temperature of the suction. That gives us an even playing field, so to speak, because it goes right up through there. Okay, the diaphragm, if the superheat is high, then the diaphragm moves down against the spring pressure, pushes down on the shaft that would be in here, and opens a valve. Uh, as the superheat goes down, this pressure reduces and the valve tends to close. Now, that's a modulating valve. It simply means, modulating simply means it's, it's going to open. When it first starts, it'll probably open wide because the superheat's very high. And then as the superheat drops down, it's going to close and it'll probably open and close a couple of times before it settles, but then it modulates. It's, this little needle valve will open just a little bit to allow just enough refrigerant through to give the proper super. Uh, that's pretty much that valve. Uh, there's not a lot to it, and uh, they tend to last forever. At least the older ones did. I don't know if the new ones are going to. But that's the uh, inside of the TXV.